name. That's right. Give the Lord some praise in this place. <laughs> so blessed to have an abundance of um, just giftings of the Lord in this place today. You know, I'm going to make everybody feel a little bit uncomfortable right now because I'm going to have y'all move. If you're sitting in the back over here, I need you to move down to the front right over here. Come on, family. Come on. Move. Move. Get up from those seats that you've been in and fill this place up. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Amen. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I see some people moving. I see some don't, that don't. That's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Interesting. Young pastor, but I'm an educator. I'm a teacher. Because what I'm talking about today is for the family. What I'm talking about today is for couples. What I'm talking about today is marriage and relationship. And so I need you to hear me. I need to be heard because the words that I'm speaking are not mine. The words that I'm going to speak today are from Jesus. And we were listening in that song. I'm off script now, so don't worry, Robin, about putting the stuff. We were listening to that song, Fall on Your Knees. And it's interesting, fall on your knees for Jesus. Yes. Fall on your knees for each other, too. Submitting yes. one yes. to another. Amen. Submitting one to another. Amen? amen? If you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> and we're talking about the Christmas story today where we have Mary, the mother of Jesus, and we have Joseph, not the biological father of Jesus, but the earthly father of Jesus, and talking about how these two people of Christmas surrendered not only to God, but submitted yes. to one another. Yes, and so the main thought this morning is this. Christ commands us to submit to one another. Yes. Christ commands us, commands us yes. to submit yes. to one another. See, the story of Mary and Joseph has been told over and over to me growing up in church and uh, then later participating in church as a worship leader and then later participating in church as a future under-shepherd to Jesus in this fellowship. And the story for me has taken new meaning. Yes. You know, and Robin will attest to this, I didn't sleep last night because I had to bring this message. And I have to bring this message to a church who claims to be a family church. And the foundation of family church is the marriage. And I, from day to day, from evening to evening, morning to morning, afternoon to afternoon, see married people that claim to be Christians, that call themselves Christians, but do not want and never have 50 years been married, 25 years been married, 10 years been married, whatever amount of years been married, never have really submitted to each other. Amen? And so therefore, for me to give this Christmas message <laughs> at a time where everybody is supposed to be so joyful and so wonderfully bonded together with this fake Christmas attitude. Like everything is so wonderful and special. I bring this message home to us. Because if we are to grow as a family church, if we are to grow as a, what? Family. 
If we are to be a family church, then we need to put these two things together in our homes, in our beds, as married people, in our homes, as fellowship, no matter what age, and demonstrate the love and the unity of Jesus Christ. Amen? This message is not only for our married folk here, but it's for singles as well. Because as long as you are single, you are married to either Jesus Christ and or the church. And therefore, you are to be in a relationship with the church and with Jesus Christ at the same time. So therefore, it's applicable to you. It is also applicable to you children that are not thinking about marriage right now. Because this is what you need to be thinking about as you submit. As Pastor was saying here, I'm, I'm totally off script now, Robin, so don't try to find anything here. I'm just, just, this is just me and Jesus right now, just me and Jesus to the, to the people. If we are to be a family, the children need to understand what marriage looks like yes. and how marriage is to be done in submission and respect in love, in indecency. And I'm not standing up here as, a, as an expert either. I have made many mistakes. Amen, Robin? I have made many, 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 and continue to make many mistakes in my relationship with my wife and with my children. So I am not the expert. I may have all the education of the expert, but I am not. So as we learn this together, let us be in the word together. Let's be on one accord. Don't get offended yes. as we go forward. Amen? Amen? All right, church, here we go. The story of Mary and Joseph. I noticed that Mary and Joseph had a very hard life. I don't think we can imagine how their life changed dramatically when Mary received the call to mother the Savior of the world. Hmm. Or when Joseph learned that he is supposed to be the earthly father of the Lord of life. If we can put that picture up. There are so many pictures that depict the family in fine clothes looking so worshipful and wonderful. Like there was not a care in the world. And here is an example of that. Um. You, you see here, Joseph, um, I, I picture Joseph to be older because I, I believe that he was, and Mary to even be younger than this picture here. But we see them smiling and rejoicing, bringing the Lord of life into life here on this earth. And can you imagine what's going through their mind right now? How are we going to do this? How how is this going to turn out? And it is interesting that the artist here, he didn't depict what was going on in the background so much as I've seen it blown up here. But you you can imagine what the background is. Animals all around. There's poop all around. Uneaten food all around. Mixed together with whatever is all around. In a stable. And yet, you see their picture here, they're smiling. Hmm. They were in a stable with animals after traveling for a long while. She was pregnant on a donkey, perhaps, walking at times when the donkey didn't want to carry her, and being ridiculed by people that they got married when she was pregnant. being disowned even maybe by their family. And that story about the Spirit of God coming upon Mary Mm -hmm. to be the Savior of the world, who believes that? Who believes that? They had gone through a lot to get to this point. And at this point, we see the Savior already born. But what led up to that amazing story This amazing story was a story of submission. 
both of them submitting to God and then Mary submitting to Joseph. And then guess what? Joseph submitting to Mary. Both of them submitting to God. Mary submitting to Joseph and Joseph, the head, submitting to Mary. As I said, what you're going to say is like, this is a Christmas story. This is like, he's talking about marriage at Christmas. But what better time to do that when you have all the people together and, you, and you're going around and you're, you have this facade on like everything is there. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. This is wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? And then you go back and you argue with each other, throw things at each other, tell the kids to shut up and go to bed. They have no dealing in this. Stop nodding your head, Catherine. <laughs> am, I, am I teaching? I'm teaching, I'm preaching, right? Amen. Y'all ain't got, what are you in here for? This is between you, me and your mother. Get out of here. Go play video games or something. You have no business in this. But you see, the problem is that you can be heard anyway, even with the door shut. Or just arguing right out in front of everybody. Dog barking. Neighbors wondering what's going on. And then you come out the house, Merry, Merry Christmas. People confused. And then you, have a big, then you have a big cross on your house, a big flag, talking about Jesus. And you decorate it, and lights are up, and everything is great. Listen, I'm talking about team. I'm talking about teamwork. I'm talking about loving each other and submitting to each other, no matter what. So when your loved ones see you, they say, yeah, we get it. Let's turn to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, please. It's like, finally, I get some scripture up here. (laughs) Gosh, (laughs) Lord, help us. Let me get some. (laughs) Finally, he turned to the Bible. (laughs) Welcome out there to our Internet audience. Um, You know, I'm usually not this harsh on Christmas. (laughs) I try to have fun. Ephesians 5, but the Lord gave this to me. Ephesians 5. Uh, It's, you know, in Ephesians 5 and 6, Paul lays out a plan for a Christian living, how to exist in the world after in 1, 2, and 3, Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, he gives of what Christ has done for us. Then he, he switches it up starting in chapter 4, and he says what you can do for Christ, basically. And this is how you walk, and this is what you do. He talks about children submitting to their parents. He talks about parents. He talks about bosses and workers. He gets real down to the nitty-gritty. Okay, this is how you do it in this context. This is how you do it in that context. This is how we do it, you see? At husbands and wives, this is how you do it. But the first thing that he tackles is the marriage, because as Pastor said, the family was the first institution. You see, it was the first institution set by God. And God said it was not good that man is alone. And then he brought Eve and and man said, wow, who is this? I'm going to call her wow man, woman. This is woman because this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And she is beautiful. And we're going to consummate this right now because I've been looking at these animals and they weren't for me. Right? That's basically Genesis 1, 2, and 3, okay? So, and then the fall happened. (sighs) We'll talk about that later, because we all live that right now in this context. So God made marriage, and so Paul here is talking about marriage, and in this verse, right before he gets to wives, submit, and husbands love, he says this, Ephesians 5, let's start in chapter Uh, Chapter 5, verse 17. Verse 17, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand that what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dispensation, dissipation, excuse me, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart, to the Lord, 
giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Then it goes on to talk about, as I mentioned before, what we are to do as husbands to wives and children to parents and workplace environment and all these other things. You see that the will of the Lord is for us to submit to him and to submit to each other. But now let's go to our example this morning of Mary and Joseph. How did they submit to one another? And as we do that, let's turn to Luke. Luke, one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And we're going to start in chapter 1. Luke, chapter 1. Verse 26. And if you got that, let's stand. If you don't have it, it's up here so you can read it with me. Let's all stand in reverence to the word of God. It's because what we do, the word of God is a light unto our path. It is a lamp unto our feet. And we stand in reverence so we can walk the path of God as we listen to his word. Amen? Verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel, Gabriel, I love Gabriel, was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, tiny little city, little, little place named Nazareth. Verse 27, to a virgin betrothed to a man, betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Gabriel's voice is this. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. That's, that's the angel voice. But when she saw him, she was troubled. She wasn't afraid. She was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting is this. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? since I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, and holy one, that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we bless you this morning. We thank you this morning that we have the ability, Lord, to submit to you. And we have the ability to submit to each other. Lord, but we want the desire. We want the desire in our hearts to be able to do both. So thank you for that. We ask that you would receive this worship in the gospel to yourself as a sacrifice to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. See, in the verse above, we see that Mary is submitting to God. Now, we're going to turn to her future husband, Joseph, and we're going to turn to Matthew. Matthew. As we were in Luke 1, now we're going to go to Matthew 1, first book of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew. 
chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. It says this, Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph because they came together. She, found, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being just a man and was not wanting to make her a public example to be stoned, let's just put it there, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things and he was asleep, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive to be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now, here's the response of Joseph. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. And he did not know her. They did not have sex till she had brought forth her son, her firstborn son, and they called his name Jesus. Now we see in these two contrasting um, passages here that they both surrendered. You have Mary surrendering to God, and then you have Joseph surrendering to God. You see, but in the details, you see, in the details of the submission, there is also earthly submission. They had to submit to each other. You see, they, sur they submitted to God. They surrendered. They, they gave themselves to the Lord. Now they have to give each other. They have to give themselves to each other. How did they do that? Let's put that picture up again. How did Mary submit to Joseph? How did Mary submit to Joseph? You see, remember Mary was young. Some say that she was as young as 13 years old. 13, that's the age of my daughter currently, right now. And she was betrothed to Joseph at this young age, 13, 14, 15, 16. I, who got married here at 16, age 16? Anybody here? Okay, 17. Ladies, 17? There we go. Okay? Wow. She was betrothed to Joseph. Most likely an older man was Joseph. We see here in this picture that he looks young. I think that he had some gray in his beard here. Okay? Yeah. He, he has some gray. He, he wasn't, you know, this fit, nice young man, Jewish, Jewish young man. You know, no. I, I believe he was a little bit older. Had some gray. You know, had a job. He was a carpenter. And so she looked at him and said, okay, you're going to be my husband? I submit to that. It was custom at the time to do this, you see. But she, I believe, wanted this. This is what we're going to do. Great. He's a spiritual man. Uh, you know, he loves God. If he didn't love God, the angel wouldn't have come to him. Amen? If, if he did not love God, the angel would be like, okay, we got to get a different couple. This is, it. no, 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 this is not working. All right, we get, get a different Mary. All right, what Marys do we have? Let me see. Oh, this one right here, okay? No, but he, the angel, came to him. I don't know if it was Gabriel. That would have been cool if it was Gabriel, you know. We did, but the angel is not named there. Most likely, maybe Gabriel. I have to ask him when I get to heaven. All right, so, uh, so you have Mary. How did she submit to Joseph? This young girl was to be his wife, and she was good with it. I'm good with it. Let's do this. Even looking forward to being married, because her, the question out of her mouth was this. Um, wait just a minute. I have not known a man. I'm a virgin. You know, I'm supposed to be 
I'm supposed to be married to Joseph. You know that. I know you're an angel. You know, you know this, right? Don't be afraid. Go on with it. And she was willing and ready to be married to Joseph. But God had a different plan, right? What made Mary so special to Joseph? I believe that it was the same thing that God found favor with Mary. You see, Joseph, a man, but you have God saying, oh, yeah, this young lady is She's, she's great. And Joseph's like, yeah, yeah, she is great. I want to I wanna marry this one. I, he was, she, she was willing in that context to submit to this thing. And this was, this was like a, a great, this is a, this is a great thing of humility on Mary's behalf. And Joseph saw that. He was like, yes, she is the one. Beautiful. Imagine this, God seeing Jesus in Mary before the Holy Spirit put Jesus in Mary. You follow me? God saw Jesus in Mary before Jesus was in Mary. You see? And so Joseph saw that special thing too. If God would not have seen that in Mary, he would have picked somebody else. There are other women to do that, but Mary. And so Joseph, like, yeah, Mary. So what about Joseph? We detailed Mary, her humility and and stuff, meek, kindness, a kind heart, a a woman willing and and ready to, to be under Joseph's authority, and then having the responsibility of being under God's authority. Wow. But Joseph, what about Joseph? How did Joseph submit to Mary? Now, man, we have a hard time with this. uh, You mean I have to submit to my wife? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Submitting to one another. Did, okay, this is not in my notes. Did Jesus submit to us? Did Jesus submit to us? Are you sure? Because all I heard was one yes, mom. Did Jesus submit to us? What did he do for us? He went to the cross, right? Hmm. And then he rose again for us, too. Oh, not only that, he's sitting at the right hand of God, interceding and debating for us. No, no, that's me. No, 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 that's me. That's me right here. That's what I did. What? Jesus, that's you? Yeah, that's me. So when, when you condemn them to hell, you're actually, that's me. I already did that. That's done. Okay, next. Matthew? What about Matthew? Matthew did all this stuff and this other said it. No, no, no. You don't understand. That's me. I'm in him. But Maria? Yeah, Maria. She's done all she's done all this stuff. Yet. No, no, no. That's me. That's me, Jesus. Already did that. It's done. You, you understand what I'm saying? So Jesus died for us. Now we have Joseph here submitting to Mary. Just as Jesus submitted to us, the church, Joseph submits to Mary, this young 13-year-old, 14, 50, whatever. He he is saying, okay, cool. Oh, my goodness. It was not easy. We see this picture of this lovely couple. We see the picture of the lovely couple, but we don't see the struggle. How many people came up to Joseph and asked, is this baby yours? That baby's yours? Man, that baby don't look nothing like you. (laughs) That baby don't look nothing like you. I I don't know, man. No, you don't see. The Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit, huh? Man, God hasn't spoken to us in 400 years, and you're going to tell me that he spoke to you and this little girl, that the Holy Spirit was going to come, and that the, the promised one is... Man, you got to be kidding me. That's 
400 years God did not speak. 400 between the Old Testament and the New Testament. 400 years. Boom. Then all of a sudden, you're going to tell me that your wife, who was pregnant before y'all got married, is carrying Jesus. Man, you must be crazy. I'll be crazy. I will submit. I will go through this with you, Mary. That's what Joseph said. They can call me what they want to call me. I'll take that too. Whatever. You are mine. I surrender. I submit myself to you. I am subject to you. I will carry the burden for you. We will do this together as one. Teamwork. We will do this because I love you and God told me to love you. I will endure the shame. I will go to the cross. I will give my life. I will submit myself to this because I love you and I love God. Now, I'm not going to get into this whole thing about wives submitting and husbands loving wives as Christ loved the church. But I, I'm just giving you a glimpse because that's for a later study. You see, Christ loved the church and he gave himself for us, for you. You see, wives are to submit and respect their husbands. Husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself, we always forget that verse, and gave himself up for her. They were both doing their part to the fullest. Yes. But we forget the context of that whole passage. And that, my friends, my family, is the Christian and the Christmas story. In verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. And we are to submit to one another because we what? We fear the Lord. We are to submit to one another because we what? Fear the Lord. That's it. That's what we are to do. You know, I'm noticing, you know, my son is in the Boy Scouts. He's on a Boy Scout trip right now. He's up uh, doing rocket launches and stuff like that. And um, I have my team member with me in the back this morning who agreed to come and, and, and do the PowerPoint and, and stuff to click it. And, you know, I would have nobody else do that because we are a team. She knows my heart. She is my teammate. We are tied together. We are bonded together. We love each other. We fight. We love each other. We fight. We love each other, we fight, and we love each other more. And we love each other, and we love each other, and we love each other, then we fight, 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 fight. That's teamwork. I don't know of anybody, I, let me see. Magic and Kareem, let me go there, Lakers, right? Magic and Kareem, they fought, right? Okay, I saw it sometimes. Um, Kobe and, uh, what's the big, what's, yeah, Shaq. Kobe and Shaq fought all the time. All the time. But they won. They won together. They were winning. Remember that a few years ago? What's his face? A crazy guy. Man, what was his name? Charles Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Winning. Of course, you know, he was, <laughs> he was in the midst of some stuff right there, <laughs> which we would call, he was, yeah, he was in the midst of some stuff. <laughs> he was jacked up for sure, right? <laughs> but we, but we submit to one another because we fear the Lord. Now, okay, now how do we do this? As we're closing and getting and wrapping it up, how do we do this? I'm, I'm almost done, y'all. Are you with me? Okay, because, you know, and this, is, this is hard. I'm trying to make it fun. So how do we do this? Before we close, let me give you a few examples. Number one, submitting to one another in prayer. 
Now, you have these sheets down here to write stuff down. I gave them to you this morning so you can make personal notes on how to do this within the context of your own relationships. So you, what you may want to do is you may, want to, you may want to get that sheet out and write down how you can pray for your spouse or how you can pray for the relationship or how you can do this. This is for you. I'm just giving you examples. Submitting to one another first in prayer. Before we show an outpour, a display of this love and submitting to one another, we first have to go inside of us and have a conversation with God. We have to have a little talk with Jesus, right? So, men and women, boys and girls, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen, You pray for the person that you love. You pray for them. Now, it's great to pray with that person, but I tell you what's better in spiritual warfare when you pray for that person. And don't pray like this. Oh, Lord, smite them in the name of Jesus. (laughs) Who said hallelujah? (laughs) Oh, Lord, show them how they are wrong. Don't pray like that. Pray like this. Lord, show me where I need to change. Show me where I need to submit. Show me where I need to surrender all. Show me. Because I am wrong. I am wrong. Not they are wrong. No. I submit to you, Lord. Show me. He beats me. I'm wrong. He sins against me. I'm wrong. Oh, am I getting too deep now? He abuses my children. I'm wrong. She steps out with me with other men. I'm wrong. She curses at me and fusses at me and... I'm wrong. Show me where I can pray for them. Am I going too deep? I sit with couples every week. Every week. I know what goes on in marriage. Tell me. I've, I've heard it all. Dude, I'm only 43 and I've heard it all. My brother down here, Peter, he's in the courtroom. He hears it all. Word? (sighs) Hear it all. I heard it all. Show me. How can I pray? How can I change my heart? This is hard. I'm not saying it's easy, but how do I change my heart? Praying for your spouse, praying with your spouse is good, but praying for your relationship is even better. Expression of spiritual warfare. Number two, submitting to one another in private deeds. Submitting to one another in private deeds. When you are together with that person and it's just you and them. When it's just you and them. You build that person up. You tell them. I love you. You don't tear them down. Don't tear them down in private. Compliment them. Complimenting them once in a while is good. In private. In private. You're beautiful. You are so handsome. I like the way you fill in the blank. You have always been good at fill in the blank. I enjoy when you... You're a great mom. You're a great dad. Even when they're not. (laughs) You provide for us, and I love you for that. (sighs) You're such, you're so caring with those kids, and I love you for that. You always know what the kids want, Robin. (laughs) I love you for that. You always know what I need. 
You always know. And, and when I don't tell you, shame on me. Hmm. You are loved by God. I can tell. I pray for you. You are the apple of my eye. I love your toes. Come on now. They're hairy and misshapen, but I love your toes. I love your back. It's so hairy, but it's, I love it. Your bald head turns me on. Excuse me, I'm not going to go too far, Pastor. I, I... <laughs> I love that meal that you make. When you put all that butter in it, even though it's going to kill me, I love it. <laughs> I wait for you. I wait for you. I love you. This is in private. Okay. You make your spouse feel good. They feel good. Now, you say, well, they never do that to me. They never say that about me. It ain't about you. It's about Jesus. Then it's about the other person. Then it's about you. Don't get it twisted. It ain't about you. They never did that to me. They never said that. That's all I hear in the council room all day long. They don't do this. They don't do that. They don't do this. What do you do? I don't do anything. I know. (laughs) Well, Pastor Cliff. Yes. You change. And stop it. Submitting to one another in public deeds. Submitting to one another in public deeds. So we move from prayer between you and God, then we move to private between you and your spouse or your other, and then we move to public. If you don't do the prayer in private, and you don't do the private in private, then you don't do the private in public. Do you do you you follow me? If you can't submit in prayer, and if you can't submit in personal one-on-one deeds, then the public ain't going to matter. You're going to be that person over there. Yeah, that's my husband. Yeah, that's my wife. Uh, You love him? Yeah, sometimes. (laughs) Robin and I were with a couple um, uh, the other night, Friday night. We go out. It's our date night. We we go sometimes, instead of going out by ourselves, we go and we we um, go with couples, you know, places, and we do things. And so we were with a couple, and I, tw- I tell you, they know who you are. You know who you are. You guys just complimented each other up and down all night. It was so wonderful. It was such an example of the love that a wife and a husband share with each other. They just compliment. Anytime he had a chance to say something positive about her, he was like, oh, you're so sweet, honey. It make you sick, don't it? <laughs> make you sick. No, no, actually, because Robin and I do the same thing. We love that. We love that interaction because it builds up the church. It builds up community. It builds up the family of God. You see, Christians, Christians, listen to me very carefully. When you see that happening and they're loving God and they're loving each other, don't you say anything about that. You love that. You express that because that is God-like. You hear me? Don't get upset with them and be like, mm, Tim, Tim, they, they always, and I hate hanging out with them because they're always showing up on Facebook and they're always on Instagram and they're always doing their thing and they show up the family, love my wife, love my family, love my kids, love my things, blah, 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 blah. I hate it. Gets on my nerves. <laughs> I don't hear that. But you know what? That's elevating Jesus Christ. That is showing the love of God. I saw a picture of my brother. I'm sorry, Peter. I'm using you as an example twice today. I saw a picture of him and his family. All this, you know how much they've been through in the last year? Little baby in the hospital, spending time. Carl was there the whole time. Make sure that she hears this, man, on on Facebook or something. Yeah, I saw them in a picture on Facebook, jumping up in the sand at the beach. Be lifted. Be lifted. 
I don't care what you're going through. You take your family to the beach, and you jump up and get a photographer, and you take a picture, and you post it on Facebook. You show loving your wife. You show loving your, your spouse, your husband. You show it. You demonstrate it. You put it up there, boom, yeah. That's what it is. This is what we do. This is how we do it. Oh, I'm getting short on time. Submitting to one another in public deeds, you show that affection. Yes. Don't be annoyed. Don't get annoyed. Now, the practicals. I've already talked about this. Couples, don't go home and start in on each other about this sermon. Pastor Cliff said you should be um, calling me what you call it. <laughs> well, Pastor Cliff said you should love my toes. <laughs> When's the last time you said you love my toes? You don't love my toes. Don't start in on each other. Take that big thing out of your eye first and submit. For singles, now there are a few items for you. As I said before, right now, if you're single and you love God and you want to be married, this is if you want to be married, you focus on Jesus. You focus on the body of Christ. You work for the body of Christ. You don't submit to all these other things in the world that have you submitting to them on the internet and so forth and so on, all that stuff. No, you submit to God. You pray for that future spouse. I know it because Robin prayed for me and I showed up two weeks later. It was amazing. I was 20 years old. She prayed for me and all of a sudden, boom. I've got to marry this woman. I don't know what she was praying for, but she was praying. And I showed up. Ain't that right, honey? Six months, she says. She prayed. And then I showed up a few months later. That was amazing. So pray for your future spouse. I don't care. A lot of people say, well, you know, you don't have to pray for your future spouse. No, go ahead and do it. Yes. Do it. Now, if you don't want to be married, you should stay in that relationship with Jesus Christ. If he's giving you that, you know, celibacy thing that, you know, I'm not, I don't have to have sex, then don't do it. Then you, you stay with Jesus. That is your calling. See, I am preaching teamwork this morning. If we are to be a family church, if New Hope Christian Center sold out to Jesus Christ, is to be a family church, then we need to correct what's happening in our family, in our relationships, and we need to submit. This is the season. This is the season to submit to each other. Amen? Let's all stand to our feet as we are dismissed. Lord God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Again, a light to us. Lord, a lamp to us, Lord. Show us the way, and we will continue to give you praise and glory for all that you do in our lives, Lord. Help us to submit to you and to submit to each other, and we make that pledge this season, your season. In Jesus' name we all say it. Amen. You are dismissed. God bless you.